Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. I think it's time to start with uh, this session. It's uh, going to cover an interesting uh, topic about community health, which is really something uh, of large interest for OC communities, because it goes uh, deeply into uh, some metrics that uh, might be very useful for all communities in measuring uh, uh, in measuring uh, uh, their, Wikip their Wikipedia's growth and renewal. So the title of the, uh, for this session is Measuring Central and Eastern European Wikipedia's Growth and Renewal. Uh, since it's uh, a pre-recorded uh, video, uh, I will play it. And after we uh, finish with the presentation, then uh, Christian will uh, respond to your questions and uh, comments. Hi, uh, welcome. I'm I'm happy to be here. Sorry, I, I wasn't hearing anything until one minute ago. My my bad, uh, wrong configuration. N now I can hear you. So I'm I'm very happy to be here. Uh, so I introduced the uh, session. Uh, I told them that uh, in case you don't appear, then I can play the video. But uh, I will leave it up to you. No, no, please. Uh, uh, let's let's play the video, which is uh, actually uh, uh, done by Mark. Yeah, yeah no, okay. Mark uh, recorded the video. Okay, then I will play it, and after uh, the video ends, you can uh, respond to comments and questions uh, from the audience. Yes, thanks. Just a moment, please. Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. It is called Measuring Central and Eastern Europe Wikipedia Growth and Renewal. My name is Pan Miguel and I'm a Wikipedia researcher. I joined the Book 20 in 2011 and uh, I've been doing several things on diversity, strategy, a part of the Catholic community. But today I'm going to talk about community health. Uh, especially Uh, Kirill, it, the video stopped for. Okay, no, it, now it's going, but there is no sound. Okay, uh, if uh, this is a problem, I can I can present live. Here, if we have a problem with the video, just let me know. I can hear it perfectly. I don't uh, know about the others. Does anyone else encounter the problem with the sound? Yes, it was, there was sound at the very beginning, but then it got silent. For the first slide. Mm -hmm. But uh, is it better now? I will start to, no. I will repeat uh, it again. I, I, I see it very, very choppy. Uh, it was still uh, yes. on a slide, uh, then no sound, and then it moved to another slide, but still no sound. And now it's if it is, frozen. If the, if it is not a problem for Christian, I would prefer to listen live because the quality was very poor. Uh, yeah, okay, just just give me give me a second um, to open to open the slides. 
Okay, sorry. Thank you, Christian. We had the same problem yesterday, so this is not something new. It's a bit difficult to uh, broadcast the pre-recorded video. Uh, yeah, just just give me a second so that I can open. Uh, I still I still uh, uh, will uh, advise you to uh, look at Mark's presentation, which uh, it was very nice, and uh, um, he prepared it in uh, in advance. So just just give me give me a second. I have just shared a link uh, to Wikimedia Commons where Mark uploaded his presentation. Yeah, thanks. It's easier in that way. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is the video though. Um, just a second, I need to retrieve the The, the PDF in the presentation. Yes, I see a comment in the chat that uh, they would like to see a link to the PDF version of the presentation, but I can't find it uh, in uh, the Commons category. So please uh, upload it or ask Mark to upload. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, just just a second. I I think is. Um, I think it's already on, on on uploaded. I just need the second to retrieve to retrieve it. Okay. Okay. Right, here it is. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So I can I will share my screen now. Uh, oh, it's a version with notes. Um, I think it's, it's it's still okay. Let me just see if I can. Sorry, sorry about this. Um, let me just see if I can find the version. The full screen version, let's see. Okay, but I posted in the chat the um, the link to the PDF that is uploaded on Commons. Uh, yeah, thank you. And otherwise, if I'm not able to find it uh, quickly, I will I will use the the presentation. Yeah, you can use it from the comments category. Yeah. Okay, I will uh, I will uh, use the presentation from the commons category. Uh. 
Okay, so I will share my screen. Can you see the screen? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, uh, so sorry again um, for these technical problems. Uh, I will I will try to to be quick since uh, the presentation is quite long. As some of you have, not, have noticed, it was uh, 44 minutes long, and we lost a little bit of time. So um, this work is part of a project that I've been doing with uh, Mark, Mikel, and David Laniado. Um, I'm Christian Corsani. I work in uh, um, Eurocat, which is a research center in Barcelona in Catalonia, and. Uh, uh, together, also, also David and Mark uh, work there. So um, we, sorry, uh, we are Wikimedia researchers, and um, we uh, focus uh, a lot of our work. And we have focused a lot of our work in the past in studying interactions between users and uh, community health. It's the topic of our project. So the idea of this project, uh, which is called Community Health Metrics, is to understand Wikipedia community's health and give tools and metrics to be able to provide recommendation to the community to have, a, um, let's say, a vision of the status of health of their communities and also recommendation to improve uh, this uh, health status. In fact, uh, we... Um, think that uh, we know that there is a, a talk about uh, the fact that, let's say, the participation into Wikipedia and Wikimedia projects in general is declining. This is a quite old news you see from 2013. But is this real? Can we have more precise um, indications that um, this... Uh, um, decline is happening and which form is this taking and why it is happening and what can we do to address uh, this change so let's um, let's go deeper in this and the idea uh, is that if you look at certain statistics you see that there is something going on for example this is something that you can get from uh, Wikimedia statistics that you can find at stats.wikimedia.org. This is an official uh, statistic ma maintained um, by the Wikimedia Foundation. It's a dashboard with a lot of these uh, graphs for um, all the projects, basically in all the Wikipedia in all the languages. And um, one major that we can use, and it's the one that is, let's say, one of the most popular measures that have been in use since uh, several years is uh, this metric of active editors. That is uh, editors that have made at least five edits in a month. So an editor is considered active for a month. It, he, uh, they have made at least uh, five edits in that month. And you see for English Wikipedia that uh, of course there was the initial phase of development, uh, let's say up to 2005, where there was uh, very rapid uh, growth. And, um, and then you, we see that this kind of growth has, has peaked around 2009, 2008, 2009. And then we see a decrease and a stall. There is a little bit uptick in the last year. But uh, um, this is the general pattern. Uh, at the beginning of the project, very rapid growth, exponential, then a stall or, or maybe a decline that then becomes a stall. How this compares for uh, Central uh, and Eastern European um, Wikipedias? So here is the top 15 uh, C languages um, in number of active editors. And you see that this general pattern is in general um, true also for C Wikipedias. Uh, maybe the decline phase is uh, less marked for uh, the, the project. We see um, a little bit of decline, for example, for German and also for Polish. But we see that um, at least if we take 
um, the top 10 uh, CE Wikipedia, we have this phase of stall. There are a couple of exceptions to this, that, I, that is Ukrainian Wikipedia, which uh, we, you see is uh, still growing, even if uh, with a little bit of uh, variance and also Tatar Wikipedia. But the general pattern that we saw for English Wikipedia, also we can see, we can see that it applies also to uh, C Wikipedias. Okay. And another thing that is important to point out that there are uh, 32 other uh, Wikipedia language edition that are um, falling under, let's say, the, the area of interest of uh, um, this meeting, this uh, this conference, and an important thing to do is that um, most of these uh, other uh, languages have very few editors, very few active editors. In fact, uh, um, you see from this graph that there are um, many of them that are below ten active editors per month. This means that they are very small Wikipedias, and we will see um, later that this has an impact also in the metrics that uh, we are going to present. To present. Uh, so let's uh, go on with um, our quantitative approach. And uh, um, for uh, some reason that, that we become clear with the presentation, we will mostly focus on the most consolidated C languages. Um, we um, are, uh, have devised these metrics that can be applied uh, independent of language. So um, Mark did a similar uh, presentation for uh, Wiki Arabia recently. Uh, and I think that this is a, a good thing to have uh, some tools and some metrics that we can apply independently of language. But we see that the size of the community, especially when it gets so uh, small, as in the case that we have shown before, represents a challenge. So um, we, there are several questions that we want to um, answer for C Wikipedias. That is uh, mainly, is there a, the growth or renewal of editors? And uh, how can we define several aspects uh, of uh, uh, this uh, that go beyond the, just the number of active editors to say um, what is the uh, status of health for uh, the CE Wikipedias. So uh, the framework that we propose as a general approach is uh, uh, called the vital signs. And uh, as you can see, there is an analogy with the medical uh, field uh, where uh, in the human body, you have uh, several vital signs that can be the blood pressure, the heartbeat and so on that can tell you the general health status of a person. And we have a, a, an idea, a similar idea for the health status of the community. And we have devised these six metrics that I, I will show you. Uh, so there are some general um, parameters that are re retention, continuity, and balance. And uh, there are some uh, parameters that are related to specific roles of uh, editors in the community, that is uh, specialists, um, let's say the tech wizards, uh, administrators, and global, global user. I will show you the definition uh, before each uh, each one of, of these. So let's start with retention. Also, um, retention is a concept that is used uh, in, in many places online, basically any, any website that uh, as users want to measure retention. In the context of Wikipedia, we define the community retention rate as the percentage of new editors who survive six, 60 days after the first edit. So that they have made edit uh, after after sixty days since their first one, um, and they keep contributing. So uh, this is a measure that uh, can give you an idea of how welcoming uh, the community is towards newbies. So how easy uh, um, is for newbies to become part of the community? This. Uh, of course, it depends not only from the community, but also from the policies that are there. 
and uh, also from the difficulty uh, in for uh, for editing and for adding new content because if i am a new editor i don't know the rules of wikipedia i find it very complicated and maybe i give up and i don't even realize that there is a community that there is somebody that i can ask uh, for for help and so on so let's see some data uh, about uh, oh sorry it seems okay uh seems like i it's a bit of trouble with the PDF. Um, okay. So um, we see here for uh, the top uh, CE languages that, um, yeah, we see these, uh, these uh, general stasis. Uh, and uh, so you, you see that in absolute number, the number of um, new editor uh, since um, 2000 and, uh, 2006 uh, onwards, it's uh, as uh, after let's say after 2009 is uh, relatively stable for uh, for the biggest Wikipedia. In some cases, it is it is um, increasing. And uh, an interesting thing here is um, that uh, the color that you see, uh, so from blue to green. Uh, represents the number of edit that um, it, uh, it, uh, is going to be uh, making over time. Um, and why is this important? Because it says not only that new people are arriving, but it is showing um, how, um, which proportion of these people are just participating very little and um, how many of them are becoming uh, more active and uh, let's say uh, very active, uh, very active uh, editors. And uh, what you want to do, what you want to see is, uh, uh, let's say, a good number of uh, editors that also become uh, very active uh, uh, over time. Of course, they will be, um, for obvious reason, a smaller fraction, but uh, you want to see, let's say, uh, a good capacity of getting new people and not only in for their first edit, but also uh, keeping them in to accumulate uh, more edits uh, over time. And, uh, and we see that, uh, as I said, after the initial years, and this is a concept that will reappear in terms of generation, we can divide, let's say, the history of Wikipedia into uh, several generations that we have defined as uh, groups of five years uh, or a lustrum, let's say, um, because uh, this depends on the maturity of the project. And um, in particular, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you see that uh, newer projects um, are able to increase um, their editors and the, the exception here, for example, that seems to be, let's say, uh, not, not uh, in, a, in a stall, in a flat uh, position, but is growing is um, Ukrainian Wikipedia. Okay. Uh, so we see that the community um, is getting an influx of people that was bigger at the beginning, let's say until 2000, and uh, uh, 2008, and then this number decreased, but is kind of stable. So we see that uh, replicates the general pattern that we have shown before. Uh, we can measure the retention rate. Um, and so it's good that new people are arriving. What is a little bit worrying is that if you measure the percentage of people that are staying, um, it seems overall, for all the top CE uh, edition, language editions, the retention rate from 2011, so in the last 10 years, from uh, 2011 to today, is, uh, is, is lowering. So uh, in particular, let's say if you want a rough estimation, um, it's around, uh, it's uh, now around, uh, let's say, uh, one to three percent. And with respect to 10 years ago, it, uh, it is half. So 10 years ago, let's say uh, for Polish Wikipedia in 2011, there was a seven, around 7% 7 of uh, new editors 
that were able to survive more than 60 days. And now this number is down to 3%. So we are still getting people uh, in, but um, the percentage of people that are able to uh, stay more than 60 days has lowered over time. And this is a general trend that we see basically for all uh, top C Wikipedias. Then uh, another parameter that uh, we have measured is continuity. And continuity is uh, um, the persistence of activator as well as the su succession of group of editor uh, over time. So basically, is uh, we have a retention that is the ability to keep uh, new people that come in. And then we want to see, do these people that come in stay for for a long time and how do they behave? And uh, here we see a measure in terms of um, how many people um, have been active for a certain number of months uh, in a row, okay, in a given moment in time. And again, the definition of active is that I have done five edits in, in one month. So if I have done five edits in a month, a month I'm active for the month for that month. If the next month I still do at least five edits, this would be two. If the next month again I'm able to do five edits, I'm still considered an active editor. And so you see that people can have a certain number of months in a row that uh, uh, they are active. And here you see that in gray, you have the people that have been active, uh, let's say just that uh, month. And with the other colors is the people that are active for more months in a row. And uh, uh, in particular, the blue one is 30 months, um, which is uh, two year and a half, which is quite a long period. And what does this tell us? This tells us that there are some users that uh, are very active in a very continuous way for a long period of time. In this case, let's say also the purple is 21 months. So it's uh, at most two years, two, two, um, up to um, two years and a half or more. And these are the very dedicated user that are active for a in a long period of time, uh, we can think that they are more knowledgeable about what has happened in the community over the previous period. And so we want a good uh, chunk of these people because, of course, we need new people that are able to contribute, but we need that, that uh, uh, these new people are also, um, let's say, uh, together with people that uh, have more experience and um, you can see here that uh, it's uh, quite stable. So um, around, uh, let's say, 30% uh, you see for, for Germany, um, let's say 35, around 35% of people are people that are active just one month. And uh, uh, we have a similar percentage of people that have act been active for a very long period of time. So what you want to do, this is a rule of thumb that uh, we are uh, still not uh, completely validated, but seems to be a good idea. Let's say that you want a balance between, let's say, uh, three groups that are one, the new ones. Um, the second one is uh, the one that are very expert, so purple and, uh, and blue. So the people that are uh, that are active for a long period of time, um, because they are keeping track of what is happening in the community, and then uh, you have uh, a middle group that are the people that are uh, being active for a certain number of, of of months, more than one, but not so much as two years, let's say. And uh, for example, for Polish Wikipedia, uh, new editors in a given month are about the. Uh, 36% again, active editors. Uh, this is more or less the, for, for other, for other languages, it's 30 to 35%. And what you want to do, it's a good balance. And what we can see here is that for, for these languages, uh, it seems that this balance is there. So it, that there is a, approximately this, this 
uh, one third, one third, one third for each group. So, um, so you see that uh, we have looked at how people arrive, are they able to stay, when they stay, are they able to contribute uh, in a continuous way for several months, and then um, we see balance, which is uh, related to the previous uh, concept, uh, to the previous two concepts, because is the proportion between all the new editors and the difference uh, with the, um, or the, the link together with the um, retention and the continuity is that uh, if you want to have new editor that become a stable part of your community and they really become long-term members of your community, what you want to do is, um, first of all, being able to get new people and, and to keep them in the project. Because if new people come and they are not staying, then you don't have any new fresh forces. And then, of course, you want people that are able to contribute for a continuous period of time so they can accumulate the experience that they need to become uh, really an important part of the community. And balance, let's say, is a higher uh, view of these uh, um, characteristics of editor. And as I said before, we have defined uh, uh, four generations that... Uh, correspond roughly to different phases uh, of uh, the uh, life of uh, Wikipedia. And um, let's say there is the initial phase from 2001 to 2005 when the project was a very niche, uh, when Wikipedia in general was a very new project. Then we have the growth, rapid growth phase from 2006 to 2010. Then we have defined another uh, period of five year uh, lustrum to 2011 to 2015, and finally from 2016 to 2020. So what is the idea of this graph? This graph shows you the percentage of very active editors, which is at people that have at least 100 um, edits, uh, in one month, for so for one month of that year, there is a person that has done in a month at least 100 edits. So very active editors. When is the time in terms of these uh, groups of five years when they have made uh, five edits? And what is telling us um, the blue the blue uh, part of these graphs? It's telling us that these are people that are there. Uh, so this is from 2014 to 2020. So these are people that are there since the early days of Wikipedia, the one in blue. Uh, also the, the one in, in orange are the people that came when Wikipedia was expanding um, a lot. And uh, of course we want a renewal. We want to be able that uh, this group of editors um, they are not the only super active editors because otherwise it it's, it's, uh, means that the same uh, people that are there since the, the first day are still the ones that are there and uh, are doing uh, a lot of work. Uh, so 100 edit, more than 100 edit in a month. So the, the, the very, very active group of people are still there, but they are the same since the very uh, early days of Wikipedia. And this is bad because for a number of reasons, at some point, these people may decide after so many years to leave the project. So we want this uh, um, group of very active editor to be renewed and so to be balanced in uh, um, each one of these uh, four generations. And again, what we see here is um, in general quite good. There are some differences be between, between the languages. So, of course, in these first years, um, you don't see the, the, light, the light blue because uh, it still is not uh, the, the last generation of Wikipedia editors were, were not born. And you see that, for example, if we take, uh, if we take Polish, we have a, a small percentage of people that are still there from the early days, the blue one. And then let's say a good balance of people that came in the um, 
2006 to 2010 generation and the one after that. The good thing that we see here, for example, for Polish, is that we see the new generation growing. And what we want to see at the end is something that looks like this, and I'm, I'm taking Polish Wikipedia because is in general a good sign that we see that there are still people from the old guard, let's say the very early days. And of course they are slowly shrinking and this is somewhat expected, but then you want to see a good balance between the various generation. So because it me and especially it's good to see that the new generation, so from 2016, the project was able to get people that are very active. And you see that there is a good balance between these categories. There are uh, projects that are younger, for example, Macedonian Wikipedia, where uh, for this reason, since the project is younger, the newer generation have a bigger, have a bigger weight. And uh, this is probably fine. Um, but it's good to see that for more established projects, uh, for example, Polish or German, we see this balance between the various generations because it means that there is renewal. Also, um, besides uh, looking at the video on Commons by Mark, which has done a uh, better job than me in explaining this, uh, in the PDF, there are some notes. And uh, so you can read the notes um, if you want to take a little bit more time to, to um, let's say, uh, get comment about uh, what these uh, uh, graphs and these uh, statistics mean. So pl please uh, also watch the video and, and get this PDF later. So these are general signs about the community. So the ability to get new people, how they stay there. So are they able to contribute with continuity? There is a renewal of uh, um, editors between various generations. Now uh, we look at special um, groups, uh, uh, at, specific, sorry, specific groups and roles of users. So uh, users that in the community uh, do something that um, not everybody does it, that is not uh, only editing uh, the pages, but for example, as in this case, um, user that engage in technical, um, in, in, in technical work, for example, they work on templates and coordination. So they engage in writing the policies, uh, making, uh, engaging community decisions and so on. And so um, here we get some uh, metrics for the very active technical editors. And we define these very active technical editors as the people that have um, at least 100 edits in one month in either the namespace template or media wiki. So these are the editors that are able to uh, make technical contributions. Um, we had uh, some discussion with uh, some uh, people from Wikimedia Poland that we that we uh, want to thank for their input. And uh, uh, we went a little bit back and forth because they were interested in looking at, let's say, at the health of this very specific community of people, of technical people. And um, this is a way that is simplified and maybe it's not exactly what um, uh, they asked us, but it's a way that we think is able to capture uh, this group of people that are able to make a technical contribution. And here the um, graph is uh, similar to the one before. Uh, the difference that you can see is the absolute numbers. So here, we are talking about mm, much, uh, as a, a much smaller group of people. For example, in um, um, Czech Wikipedia, in 2020, the group of um, technical uh, technical editors is around 20. So, and and uh, and in in German Wikipedia, we are around 60. So it's a very few, uh, very small group of uh, very specialized people that do a lot of contribution in this technical namespace uh, of templates and, and media wiki. And the reasoning is the same as above. You want to see a renewal. And again, um, 
besides the very low numbers, so it's uh, something that you should really keep an eye on as a community. You want to support these people because even one people more or less is going to have a huge impact because this group is so, so small. But again, you see that uh, in general, we see a good balance, a good balance of people that are there. There are very few of them, maybe let's say the very early generation, uh, there are very few of them that are in this group, but then we see a good balance between the generations. And this is good because it means that there is a, there is a, a renewal between the generation of people that are technical. Again, uh, the main idea here probably is that you want to support this group of people because they are so few. And so even one leaving or one getting getting on board, so getting becoming part of this group is, is going something to be something that you notice because they are so few. And then we have another similar group of people that are instead the one that uh, edit the Wikipedia um, namespace, uh, so where the policies are. And uh, uh, here the numbers are a little bit greater. Again, not, not for every project, check Wikipedia, just uh, 15 people, very, very few. Um, but you see for more established projects uh, like uh, German and, uh, and um, Polish, you see, um, again, a good balance between generation. Again, and here it seems that um, people that uh, care about the community, how the community works, um, stick uh, around a little bit longer because here we have more people that um, were there since the very early days of uh, Wikipedia. And these are the, let's say, historical memory of the projects and of the discussion that led to a policy. So this is a very important group of people. Uh, and you want to, let's say, uh, keep them there. But again, you want some renewal. And we see, for example, in, in Polish and in German, a good balance uh, between this, uh, the generation for this kind of coordination users. Um, sorry, uh, Kirill, how am I doing with time? Sorry. Uh, you have time uh, two more up? minutes for the presentation, and then we can uh, leave uh, a couple of more minutes. OK. Uh, yeah, I try. I have. I try to be quick, but uh, here maybe one of the more interesting results are admins. So uh, I am assuming that you all are aware of who are admins or CISOPS. So the people that are uh, that have special rights in the community, and um, we have a very complex graph, but it's very interesting because it shows for each year basically how many new. Uh, administrator um, uh, rights were granted for that year and to which generation uh, do they belong. And here we see a little bit of a warning sign. So you see here that we don't have the new generation. We have, uh, and we still have in some communities, um, for example, uh, German, a huge number, uh, where over proportion, over representation of administrators that, uh, and of course, these are numbers that are taking into consideration the activity. So these are people that are active, that are still active. Um, we see an overrepresentation of administrators uh, that uh, uh, came from the early days of the project, and we don't see the new generation. So it seems that uh, the project the, 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 sorry, the process to become a, a new administrator was open in the first years of Wikipedia, and then it became more and more difficult to become an admin, and we are not making people in the new generation, even if we have seen that we have people that in the new generation that are very active, so probably they know how the project works, they, 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 they also have, uh, want to contribute to the project, and so they could be admins, but they are not becoming admins. And so maybe this is a problem of the policy. This is a problem. Uh, this could be a problem of the community that doesn't feel, um, let's say, um, ready to give to give these uh, rights to, to people that are there si since a short amount of time. But 
Uh, this was not true for, for the beginning, for the beginning, for the early years of Wikipedia, and this may become a problem because if these people leave from the old generation, then we, we lose uh, very important uh, members of the community that have a very important role. Another statistic that is a little bit troubling is the percentage of active admins over the number of active editors. And uh, you see here in, in uh, black the absolute number um, and then the percentage. And in a sense, this number gives you an idea of how many people does an admin have to watch over, to, to, to put it in a very simplified way. And you see that these percentages are, are very, very small in some cases. For example, um, for Polish Wikipedia, is uh, just uh, 0 um, um, 0.76%. And again, for Polish Wikipedia, we have just one admin that was granted uh, in 2021 that is from the last generation. So uh, there are very few admins with respect to the general number of active editors, and we are not making, uh, we are not granting this right to the new generation. And this could be troubling. Um, that could be a number of reasons. We can discuss this uh, later, maybe. Um, so, uh, final thing, I try to be very quick, global users. What do we mean with this? Is people that are active not only in their own Wikipedias, but in the global community. And we use for this uh, Meta, um, so MetaWiki. And uh, uh, interesting uh, fact is, um, there are 1,200 active editors in, in MetaWiki, and 11% of them have uh, um, see Wikipedia as their primary language. We define the primary language as the language where uh, a user has done most edits, and you see that uh, there is a, a big uh, representation of English uh, with 40%, and then German, French, and so on, and we see... Um, Polish, if I remember correctly, is here, yes, with 106 people uh, on par with uh, Bengali and Portuguese Wikipedia. So this gives you an idea of um, what part of the global community um, is made by people that have this um, background, so uh, this primary language. And another way to look at this is, okay, um, given a uh, langu primary language of an editor, um, do they edit in the same language, or do they come from from um, or or do they come from other wikis? You see that for ninety percent of people uh, of active editors um, for August twenty twenty one that edit on German Wikipedia, uh, German. Uh, Wikipedia is also their primary wiki, okay? And we see a smaller percentage uh, in blue that is coming for English Wikipedia. For other languages, for example, Belarusian, this percentage is lower. So uh, just 47% uh, of editor that for which Belarusian Wikipedia is also their primary wiki that they are editing there. And some of them, a percentage of them, are coming from Russian, which is this green that you can see here. Again, this uh, is a way to tell you in your Wikipedia how much of the community is, let's say, local to that Wikipedia and how much is coming from other Wikipedias. So it's kind of a complementary of the graph that I've showed uh, uh, before. So I'm sorry to... to <laughs> be going so uh, quickly, but we, we don't have time. Um, sorry about that. Uh, a good thing to notice um, about what uh, I have said before, that the difference between, let's say, having less than 10 editors and active editors and having more than 10 editors is that we see that for the C languages that have less than 10 active editors, their composition have an important part of people that have their primary wiki is in another language. So. Um, for example, um, in this case, 100% of the active editors for this wiki uh, come from other wikis, English and Russian. And I don't, oh, sorry, 
I don't remember uh, what is uh, this uh, pink color, uh, but again, uh, what this means is that in some cases, some of these wikis uh, have the active editors in these wikis primarily edit in another wiki and they also come to this wiki. So they are, let's say, um, not from uh, that same wiki. So uh, let me just get to the conclusion and sorry for, for, for uh, going so fast. We have defined in this presentation six vital signs to give uh, a more detailed view of uh, uh, the health status of a community. Some of them are general, some of them are based on the roles of the user in the community. What we have found is that um, there are margins of improvement um, to stay open in retention, balance, admins, and uh, participation in, in MetaWiki. Some things are looking very good, uh, in, for example, in terms of balance, some things could be ameliorated. So uh, retention is key everywhere because if you don't have new people, all of this discourse uh, is, is kind of uh, empty. And uh, um, I will advise you to check out what the WMF Pro growth team is doing, for example, to make uh, the UI easier to, to use and so it's easier to participate. Balance is important to have a, a proportion of older generation of very active editors uh, that don't leave and also um, uh, new generation, take care of your older generation, especially in the cases uh, of coordination uh, users, so users that are active in, in, in Wikipedia namespace and users that are technical, users that are technical are very precious in general because there are very few of them. One advice is uh, plan for admin renewal and uh, most of the C Wikipedia's we have so, we have seen have um, can increase the number of, of admins. There are the, the proportion of admins with respect to, to the general number of active editors is very small. In some cases, is less than one percent. And think about the process for new editors, editors that arrived a few years ago, maybe two years ago, three years ago. How do they become admin? And maybe this requires, a, it for sure, requires a discussion in, in your community. But what we see is that admins that are there are probably from the older generations. And this could be a problem in the long run. And uh, in general, um, participate, participate in MetaWiki because this has an impact on the global community uh, and encourage editors to share uh, their discussions there. And... Last thing, um, we want to uh, convert the graphs that you have seen here in this presentation in dashboards that are interactive so that you can use for yourself. You can look uh, in what you are most interested in. This is still a work in progress. In general, uh, we are open to feedback and thank you for this opportunity of presenting here. Uh, you can write to Mark, uh, you can see here his address or, or, or to the project page, uh, write to, to the whole team. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it. Thank you very much and sorry for the technical problems. Hey, thank you, Christian. We, are, we have already run out of time. Uh, we don't have uh, any time for questions, but I will, would strongly advise to use the Etherpad where I have uh, uh, added some of the questions asked in the chat. I also invite you all to use the Etherpad to ask questions and uh, you, Christian, to try to answer them. I have sorry, them. sorry, Kirill, would, would, you, would you mind if this chat, this, this room is open for, for the next, uh, during the next session? Uh, a yeah, I, can, I can make you a post so that you can uh, stop the live stream because I have to move to the uh, other conference room to uh, mm -hmm. moderate the other session. But yes, That's you can uh, take control of the uh, etherpad and continue the session. I will make you a host. Okay, uh, Shamat, you can continue with the session. Thank you, thank you. So I, I will propose that we continue with the discussion because it's so interesting and uh, I at least for, for me, this is one of the most important, most interesting uh, 
topic session in the conference and I, I saw that there are so many questions that uh, came up during the during your presentation. So I would open for the question. Yes, thank you, Christian. Very interesting presentation. Thanks. Thanks a lot. And uh, I have to give 99% uh, of the credit to Mark that prepared the presentation and also the video. Please check the video. Um, I, I just, let's say, uh, <laughs> substituted it at the last minute, substituted the, the Mark's presentation. Um, I'm not looking at the other part. Um, so just a second. Uh, let me see. I don't know if you mean, about, we mean, have a presentation here about uh, creating a hub, a new function, uh, something larger than a chapter, uh, maybe for a CE region. And, and I guess one of the tasks for such a hub could be to look at such health statistics and, and see how to improve. This is exactly what I wanted to mention, that uh, actually there is a not very used editor retention hub already on Meta, which we, which I would be very happy if we could fill up with, with activity. Uh, and and I would propose a, a, a future future uh, discussion for a place where we discuss uh, this research results of this research research and others uh, together with everybody who is interested. In. How do you think about it? So, um, in general, uh, let's say um, there are some aspects of this that, uh, and several aspects of, of all the statistics that I've shown that are related to, let's say, policies or process that are used in, in, in Wikipedia. And uh, I think that um, what would be very helpful is if a community uh, finds something that is working then and this idea can be shared with other communities. And so the role of a hub would be this one, to be able to get ideas that are working in some places to apply them in other places, of course, and being, um, let's say, um, a more homogeneous group, also in terms of the age of the project and the size of the project, is going to be better because, because of course the environment is going to be similar or more similar. And, and, uh, and this is something that um, I think what, what this kind of initiative of coordination of projects at the regional level should be doing because they group naturally around projects that have more similar characteristics. And so this kind of learning of what is uh, working in a project can be more easily transferred to other projects. I don't know if that just answers your, your question. Yep. Gergo? Hi. Uh, thanks a lot, Christian, for working on this and to Mark, I guess. Uh, this is, I think, it's an incredibly important uh area and it's it looks like a very useful tool uh wikimedia hungary is working on a similar tool on a much smaller scale so it might be interesting to compare ideas at some point on, in time the chapter is trying to focus on editor retention uh one thing i yeah, yeah. Sorry, on. yeah please <laughs> one thing i i would be very interested on in hearing people's opinions if they they have uh, thought about this. There is a I think a very infuriating lack of curiosity around the whole decline thing. Like uh, we have dozens of, of wikis which changed from a rapid exponential growth to decline roughly around the same time, projects with very different sizes, projects with very different demographics. No one seems to have a good idea why that happened. The, the foundation did like a year or two of research into it and then just decided to give up for some reason. So I, I realized that it's pretty hard from a decade distance to 
come up with hypotheses, but it, it seems like a super important question. So I, I'm curious if, if you have wondered about that. Um, okay. Uh, I'm afraid I don't have a real answer for this, so I will start with this um, for two reasons. One reason is um, in this project, we were focusing on more general health science, not just the retention. So this uh, idea of having new people that stay. Um, and and so uh, the, because also this was something that was already looked by earlier work. So that's one component. One other component that is important uh, is the other side of this equation. So when people leave, and actually in this project, we are uh, still working on some metrics related to that. Um, in general, what I can say is um, there has been some research that has shown, and I'm thinking about the book from Darius Gemeniak, uh, which is also a board member of the Media Foundation, that shows that uh, for example, the t there is an increase in complexity of rules um, in all the projects as they grow older, and this is kind of a barrier um, to participation. And again, something that makes easier the life easier for people that were already there, but a little bit uh, more difficult for new people. So this could be also an element. And um, we are working on some other uh, metrics that are related to conflict and discussions. Uh, so can, there have been some research in the past about um, way to detect conflict uh, in Wikipedia. So when there are edit words, when, when people fight. And uh, we are also working on, on, on a data set uh, that was uh, recently produced with all the discussion um, from certain language, Wikipedia languages, unfortunately. And, and we are looking at, for example, the emotions that were um, used in these messages, because one idea is that if you have bad experience uh, in interacting with other um, users in your discussion, at some point you may give up and say, I, I won't leave, I don't want to stay here anymore. One problem that we, we have with this approach is that these tools are dependent on, are dependent on the language because you need to analyze the, 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 the words and, and um, being able to convert them in this, uh, let's say, uh, standard uh, uh, sets of emotions. Uh, so this is something that we are less able to apply to everything because these kind of tools are available not for every language. Uh, we are still working on this. There is some preliminary, um, we have some preliminary uh, evidence that, uh, for example, receiving warnings. Uh, so you see, you know that in some Wikipedia, you have automatic templates that you can put in a user page when a user does something that uh, is not following the policies. We have some preliminary evidence that using these uh, uh, templates leads to a decrease in participation or even people leaving, even when they are not blocked. So even if we discount the people that are blocked because they are doing something very damaging, but just the people that made some mistakes, they get these messages and it's more likely that they will be less active in the future or they leave outright. So we are looking into these characteristics. Again, we still don't have very super solid data to see, oh, look, uh, this happened and then this happened. And probably I'm not sure that we will be able to get there. One thing that we would advise in that case is try to think if there is a way to handle this kind of situation in a different way. So maybe the system is a little bit more forgiving uh, for the people that, that uh, actually merit this kind of forgiveness, of course, because if one is blocked, it's blocked. Uh, because it's vandalizing the project. But there are, as I said, there are cases in which we see, even if you are not blocked, the fact that you received a stern message from another user said, okay, maybe I will do less. And, and then you leave. 
um, or maybe I am afraid to do something. Um, so, uh, but this is very complicated discussion in what, how this becomes something that happens in the project. And, and, and of course we need to discuss this uh, to the community. And what we want is, what we want to do is just show the, the effect that we see. I would have a question about your data because uh, your graphs are very useful already, but uh, I'm not sure if your, your raw data, is, is it available somewhere for public? Yes. Yes. Um, the, code, the code is all on GitHub. We have a GitHub repository. Uh, the, the data is public as well. Uh, we are using several data sets, but mm, they are all coming from um, from the Wikimedia data, let's say, uh, not all of them from 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 the Wikimedia Foundation, let's say, uh, not directly. Let me be more clear. We are using a lot of the MediaWiki story dump, uh, which is a data set produced by the Wikimedia Foundation that is like a very compact way uh, of having events like page creation, uh, user blocks. Uh, and it's without all the details that you get in the full history dump. It's like, let me say, it's a summarized version of the full history dump in some sense. And it has a strange name because it's called Media Week History Dump. Uh, but you can find it on Meta um, and you can download this data for all the Wikipedias. Um, we are using, in some cases, the full history dumps. Um, we are using this Wikiconv dataset that uh, was produced in a paper um, from, from two years ago, if I'm correct, or three years ago. We, uh, and the problem with this uh, is basically a parsed, parsed version of the uh, discussion in, in Wikipedia talk pages, in, in, in talk, article talk, in all talk pages. Um, the good thing is that uh, they did a a huge amount of work in making this a little bit more structured because it's very hard to to work with the, the raw data of the discussion that you can find in in the XML dump. But they made a, in this paper they made um, they made a basically um, classification of the type of edits. So uh, something that is adding a new conversation, something that is adding a new message, something that is deleting. Uh, stuff that was existing and and this kind of structure makes your life much more easier the problem is it's not available for all, all languages i think it's available for i would say five or maybe a little more languages and those are the big ones um maybe it's available in russian but i'm not i think i think it's available in german uh, maybe it's available in russian but i'm not sure the good thing is that we contacted the authors and and they were very kind to produce a new version of the data set with the latest dump uh, and for the languages that we requested. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's doable, let's say. The, the problem is that, that to produce this, you you need uh, infrastructure, you need machines, and you need to be able to to compute to to to, to process the data because it's coming from the XML dump, but it's kind of semi-processed version that is make makes your life easier. And yeah, and the rest, yeah, I think these are the data set that we have been using to show you this data and they are all open and the code is all open. And if it's okay, not open, we want to make, we want to make it open. So if it's not open, please ask and we will make it open. Yeah, thank you. I don't see any raised hands, but there were several questions in the chat. Uh, which I would like, I will not repeat now, but if somebody has a short question from the from the participants, please let us know. So, and uh, it's only, only I, I let you know only a few more minutes because uh, we have a main session, which uh, I, and uh, I, I also don't want to use the time of the interpreters anymore, so I would stop the recording. So any question more? Uh, problem with the retention is if the front page of Wikipedia says, hey, welcome, try to edit something, then you will have a lot of new editors that give up very soon. But if the front page says, warning, if you're really serious and you want to contribute knowledge, then you can write something. Then you will have very few editors, but they are more likely to survive. So the I think maybe 
when you count retention as survivors as share of total new users, uh, it's very different how big uh, is the number of new users really. And maybe you should compare to the entire population who speak the language. Uh, so out of 10 million Hungarian speakers, how many new users were registered this month? Uh, was it uh, a fraction more or less than the Czech the proportion of the Czech speaking population? It's just an, a reflection here. Yeah. Uh, it's um, very difficult to to know the intention of people that are coming. Um, there have been some surveys done by We Media Foundation, but of course, it's it's, it's very difficult to, to know the intention of the people that are coming on the page. I, I suspect that in the first five years, Wikipedia had this front page that said, hey, try to edit something. And, and then we saw very, very many new users. And, and in 2006 and seven, it started to get more serious. It started to require citation sources and and made it more difficult, this, more serious. This is the, the increasing complexity that I was mentioning before. At the beginning, there were no rules and basically you could try and maybe more or less everything was okay, kind of okay, unless you were doing something very bad. And then you start seeing, oh, you need to format this in this way. So I do something and then I see that it maybe it gets uh, cancelled because it was not following the, the manual of style. That is not really a problem in the, name, in, in, in the sense of content. But if I see that I do something and nothing happens and nothing changes or it gets deleted, maybe I say, oh, it's not working and I give up. And maybe this was happening less at the beginning. Um, but again, um, at least what we see is that for at least for the CE Wikipedia, also one thing that maybe I didn't mention, this is not the same in all the Wikipedias that we are looking at. There are other communities where this is not the case, that there is not this renewal. And, and this is a problem. Um, but we see that there is a, the CE Wikipedia, in general, there is a good balance. Seems to be that, it, good, that, that, that there is good balance. A wiki switch of the growth features enabled actually ask new people when they register why they are what they want to do on Wikipedia. There are like seven different options. The data is not public, but I think it could be made easily available. Uh, so that's an option to look at. Uh, I, I think. Uh, how's uh, how's the name of this? Sorry, okay, I I uh, didn't know. This is the growth feature set. You mentioned it in the presentation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think activation numbers along the retention numbers would be nice because uh, if, if retention is, is going down because activation is going up, that's that's a very different thing. So the, the foundation is trying to do things to increase the number of new users, improving activation is easier than improving retention. So maybe they try things to improve retention, but they only end up like channeling new users into the into the funnel, but the most of them drop out. And then what you see is a drop in retention, even though actually the situation didn't get any worse or maybe even improved slightly. But that, that, that might be worse, uh, I think. Uh, I, I had another question. So I think this is this is already super useful. But uh, what I, I would really love to see is like uh, actionable interventions. So things like not not just statistics about uh, like negative messages, but saying this this user's interactions result in a very high number of people back with him leaving or like here is a new user who is very productive. So do you see something like that as a eventual future step in this project or is that a very different kind of uh, in, in, No, in part we want to do exactly this. Um, if I get your question, one thing that we don't really want to do is to do this at a single user level. 
we want to have uh, aggregated things because um, we realized, and this was a discussion that we have quite a little bit with uh, when we made the proposal and also with people from Wikimedia Research, um, it's a prob. It could be a problem for, let's say, not privacy reason because all the data that we are using is private. But you can use this public data to kind of target single users, or even if it's a you do a statistics, but it's three people, then you can easily you know know who they are, and we want to avoid this because you know any of these numbers can be read in a good light or in a bad light, let's say. Oh, uh, you you put a message uh, when you were doing the patrolling and then this user left. Uh, maybe you did a good job uh, or you can say, oh, you are the bad guy, you know, you are making people leave. Uh, or, or So it's, it's very, it's very tricky and we don't want to do it and and we want to stay on this level more aggregated so i the part about uh i think this will, will not become a tool where i can show you oh look these are the active people of these months uh go talk to them or or, or these are the people that left the messages for which the people have stopped editing go talk to them um because i think this is a more uh, this could turn very 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 ugly it's a discussion that the community needs to have. Okay, we can show, okay, maybe this message in this way, this template is making a lot of people leave. Let's change the message. It's not the, the fault of a single user. Um, and also the community knows perfectly the, the people that they have and how they behave. We can give, uh, uh, especially the very active people, and we can give some general advice, but we don't want to give advice with single single users um christian thank you for your presentation and for the discussion i would like to stop this session here and stop the recording but uh, if you okay. are open for it, we i would like to happy to contact you later yeah yeah sure thanks i thank will you. share the etherpad, etherpad with mark and david as well bye thanks a lot Bye bye. Do you, do you know Thanks how can I stop bye. the live live streaming? Because uh, I stopped the recording, but I don't know how to stop the YouTube streaming. I don't really know. Okay, it's still saying the rec 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 recording to me, but okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks.